Ezekiel chapter number 20. It came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month. All right, now this one's dated. That certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire the Lord and sat before me. Now this is the time that Ezekiel is in Babylon. Then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, we, we got it dated, and we got the inspiration of, of God speaking to Ezekiel. Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye come to inquire of me? As I live, saith the Lord, an oath of God, on that is eternal, saith the Lord God, I will not be acquired by you. Will thou judge them? What do you do when you judge not least he be judged? God told Ezekiel, he says, Will you will thou judge them, son of man? That's Ezekiel. Will thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I choo chose Israel, and lifted up my hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up my hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. In that day that I lifted up my hand unto them, to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had despised for them, Flown with money, money, with milk and honey. That's milk and honey put together, money. Which is the glory of all lands. Now what we're doing is we're in the book of Exodus. When God spoke to him, he, said, he told Moses, I hear, their, I hear their tears, I hear their prayers. I've seen the affliction. Now I'm going to drive them out. And he had to drive them out because Pharaoh wanted to keep them. Then said I unto them, Cast ye every, cast ye, every, every yeah, I promise it. Cast ye away every man the abomination of his eye, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So God told him, Come out clean. But they rebelled against me, and would not hearken unto me. They did not. They did not every man cast away the abomination of their eyes. Neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. When I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. So we learned something else that we didn't learn in Exodus. In the writings of Moses, the five books, they took the idols of Egypt with them. As Rachel took her father's idols and caused Jacob much trouble. But I wrought, be worked, wrought iron, iron is iron that was worked for my name's sake, that I should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them, and bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Now this is where Moses intercedes for the nation. God about had it with them. Especially after Aaron makes this calf. You know, I threw it in the fire and out came this calf. Wow, wonder we boo. Hocus pocus. Wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt. And brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes. Exodus 20. And show them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. There's a the law. There's the works. That's not us. Not if any man should boast, you know, we're saved by grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not by what we do, but the Jews had their covenant, their ways with God. And it was the law and obedience. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths. Gave who? Gave the Jews. He didn't give no Sabbath to no Gentile. Do you know until Moses spoke from Exodus 20 on and in writing Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, do you know that no Jew knew what the Sabbath was? 
The Sabbath was learned in Genesis. Who wrote Genesis? Moses did. Now watch this. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbath to be a sign. Match that with 1 Corinthians 1.11, I believe it is. So, Jews require a sign. A Sabbath is a sign. Between me, God, and them, Jews, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. Uh, Exodus 4, 9, 1 Corinthians 14, 21 and 22, and Nehemiah 9, 13. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, numbers. And they despise my judgment, which if a man do, he shall even live in them, not us. And my Sabbaths, they greatly polluted. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake that I should not be polluted before the heathen, in whose sight I brought them out. They were in ruining, if that's a word, God's testimony by what they were doing. They were no different than the people from the heathen that were around them. God said, you know, you're making my name foul. You're making me a stink. i got to deal with you. You can't make me foul and you can't make me stink. And that's exactly what they were doing. Yet. Yeah. Also, I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness, that I, would, that I would not bring them into the land which I have given them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Now, we verse much further from the wilderness. We, we've gotten to the land of Carnage Benea. Uh, be, uh, Carnage Benea. They sent the spies in. Ten of them come back with an ill report of the land. And they start, oh, let's head back to Egypt. What's God doing to us? Blah, 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 blah. We can't do it. We're just as grasshoppers. And God told them, okay, 40 years you guys are going to travel in that wilderness. 40 years for 40 days that you've done it. And you're not going to see that land. But Joshua and Caleb will see that land. So what Ezekiel's doing to the elders is what Stephen does in Acts chapter 7. He's giving the history. Notice how often God repeats history. You forget history. You forgot where you come from. He tells one of the churches in Revelation, you lost thy first love. You forgot who you were. Yet also I lifted up my hand un unto them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land which I have given them, flowing with milk and honey. Which is the glory of all lands. Everybody wants that piece of property. Even in 2015, everybody wants that property. Because they despise my judgments. And walk not in my statutes, But polluted my Sabbaths. For their heart went after their idols. So what we read is idolatry we've been reading in Jeremiah. This idolatry we've been reading in Ezekiel has gone all the way back into Egypt. They never did escape those idols. And those idols had brought them further and further away from God. And has brought abominations. Nevertheless, my eyes spared them from destroying them. Neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. Now remember, Moses is praying. Moses in, is interceding for the people. They say had Moses and God got angry at the same time, it would have been as a smoking pile of rubble. Sometimes we're still living because the type of um, a man that was the prophet like unto Moses stands before God and makes intercessions for us today. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. When God is angry with the Father, it's under the blood. Remember, they're just men. They're just sinners. We haven't perfected them yet. 
But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statutes of your fathers, neither observe their judgment, nor defile yourself with their idols. So remember when Josh, when Joshua is going to die, he's going to break off, he's going to set them off. He said, Listen, as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. Well, he said, What do you want? You want the gods that were that were before of your father Abraham? Do you want those gods that are from Egypt? I don't want them. I want God. And they say, oh yeah, we'll serve God. And I'm not quoting the, the chapter right. And Joshua said, you can't serve God. He says, get those idols. Get rid of them. And they turn around and say, yeah, we'll serve God. And you never read that they got rid of those idols. But I said unto their children, Well, it's walking not in the statutes of your fathers, neither observe their judgment, nor defile yourselves with their idols. Idols keep coming up. Idols is the second commandment of the Big Ten. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes. What Moses wrote. And keep my judgments, what Moses wrote, and do them. Oh, I can memorize scripture. I can read the Bible, but do you do it? And how my Sabbath. This is 593 plus years before Jesus Christ is even born. You still got another 33, 40 more years after that before the church is even being. Not once in the Bible do you see a Gentile or a Christian told to honor the Sabbath. And they shall be a sign between me, God, and you, the Jew, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. So if I were to take Saturday off, I'm going to know God. I know a lot of people have had Saturdays off. They don't know God. That's for the Jews. Notwithstanding, the children rebel against me. Don't we all do that? That walk not in my statute, neither keep my judgments to do that. Which if a man do, he shall even live in him. That's three times. That's not us. Our righteousness is Jesus Christ. They polluted my Sabbath again. Then I said, I would pour out my fury upon them and accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Where do you re read where Paul says, you know, honor the Sabbath unless God will destroy you? Husband and wife in the book of Acts were destroyed because they lied to the Holy Spirit. They lied to God about money, but not because it was a Sabbath. And then with the Sabbath, they, they took it too far. They wouldn't listen to Jesus because it was a Sabbath. Look what he did on the Sabbath. What work did Jesus really do on the Sabbath? Is speaking a work? Stretch out thy arm. He stretched it. What work was that? Really, that was no work. I mean, physical labor. He just spoke like he did the guy with the, with the arm that, that was withered. Genesis 1. Stretch out that arm. He stretched it off. There was no physical labor done. It came out, and oh, the Sabbath. The Sabbath came after the God spoke. You forgot that God said, let there be, let there be, let there be. You forgot about them. You forgot about God the Creator. And God the Creator was taking care of his creation while you were belly aching because he didn't honor the Sabbath. Oh. Then he turns up and says, Well, don't you feed your cows? Don't you take care of a donkey that fell into a pit? Don't you do circumcision? Don't the priests work on the Sabbath? Those are all manual things. And I said, I pour out my fury upon them and accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. 
God is not going to accomplish his anger upon the church because we have broken the Sabbath. He is going to break his anger upon us because when you read the Laodice Eden church age, when we become lukewarm, we've got great of everything in the world's abundance. And he doesn't break us. He just gets sick of us. We get so out into the world and so away from God that he has to call us home. That's it. Church is over. Get up here. You ever have a child like that? Hey, just got get in here. Get in here right now. That's it. Then the judgment. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and wrought for my name's sake that I should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen, in whose sight I brought them forth. Everybody is watching the Jews. Oh, look at look at that bunch of people over there. They just, they're acting just like us. I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness, that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through their country, through the country, because they have not executed my judgments. Execute a funny word to use for judgment. There were laws in the Old Testament that a man was to be stoned. And they didn't execute. But had despised my statutes, had polluted my Sabbath. Their eyes were after their father's idols. Rachel's back in the play again. One day really ever got rid of all those idols of Rachel. Somebody had to keep something. Achan, one day, he picks up a piece of gold, a sliver of silver, and a garment, and hides it. And you know what happened for that crime? All his family were executed. Idols is a very serious thing. It is so serious, it is the subject matter over and over in this chapter that, listen, I did not give him that land. I did not take care of him. I gave him anger. I am about to destroy Jerusalem with Jeremiah there because of idolatry. It is the number two on the top ten list of commandments by God. Number one being God himself. Did you read that second commandment? If you got idols... The, it goes to other generations because mama and papa teach their children and what grandma and grandpa taught their children are now being taught to the grandchildren what to do and I grew up in that that system called a church of idolatry and it just passes on from generation to generation here's the bees here is the little dolly. Here is Mary. You take care of her. You do what the priest tells you to do. You do what the church tells you to do. Never mind what God has to say about it. And then when you get a Bible and you go to them and you try to tell them what the, you can't hardly ever deal with those people. And you, some, but many. Because they have not executed my judgment. But have despised my statutes, and have polluted my Sabbath, and their eyes were after their father's idols. Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not, wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good, and judgments whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts, and that they caused to pass through the fire all that opened the womb, that I might make them desolate to the end. That they might know that I am the Lord. All right, they picked up another God, Molech. They were giving their children over to the idols. Now killing their children. Find find where God ever said to do that. You know how strong the idols have become. Here's my child. Take him, burn him. Therefore, son of man, Ezekiel. Speak unto the house of him. Can you imagine these elders sitting here listening to this? You know how the, the people acted with Stephen? They started to chew him like bubble gum and then ran him over with a Honda Accord. They said ran him over and ran him over with one accord. They didn't like the history then with Stephen. They don't like the history now. Therefore, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, and say unto them, 
Thus saith the Lord God, the house of Israel is not in Israel, they're in Babylon. Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, in that they have committed a trespass against me. For when I had brought them into the land, which he did, Psalm 16, 4, for that which I lifted up my hand to give it to them, then they saw every high hill, uh oh, and all the thick trees, uh oh, and they offered their their sacrifices. Now we know what the problem with with hills and trees. They were sacrificing to the gods, to the idols, and there they presented their provocation of their offering. There also they made their sweet savor and poured out there their drink offerings, and it's not to God the Father. You know what they were doing on a hill in about 33 AD? Getting ready to have their own little feast. Oh yeah, they called it the Passover, but was it the Passover? Was it God's Passover that God had set to them by the rules that Moses wrote down? The fact is that on that afternoon, that night, whatever you want to call it, that was the Passover land they crucified? Then I said unto them, What is the high place wherein you go? And the name thereof is called Bama unto this day. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers? Now remember we talked about the other night. The father won't be charged by the son, and the son won't be charged by the father. But the children are doing exactly what their fathers taught them. And it's getting worse by worse by the year. And commit ye whoredoms after their abomination. Now the whoredom, again, we read, it's not men paying for women. It's men being involved with idolatry. And when you offer your gifts, when you make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourself with your idols, even unto this day. And ye and excuse me, and shall ye be inquired of by you? Are you going to be so bold to come to me and say, God speak to me after what you've been doing? They're not coming to Ezekiel in repentance. They're demanding of God. O house of Israel, as I live again the second time this saith the Lord God, God lives forever. I will not be required of by you. I don't have to give you an answer. But you're going to stand in account before me. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be as at all that ye say, We will be as the heathen, as the families of the country, to serve wood and stone. Look at that. We're going to be just like the, 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 the heathen that uh, Jonah and Peter don't want to have anything to do with. We're going to be like them. We want a king like them. Isn't that what they said to Samuel? As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a, and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. You don't want me as a ruler? I'll demand rulership. You know that outstretched arm, that mighty hand, that fury? That's what destroyed uh, Egypt to bring Israel out. And yet Israel was brought out of Egypt, I'm going to say freely. They are brought to Babylon in chains. Leaving their land that God has given them destroyed. At the final time, that the third time that Nebuchadnezzar comes to the land. Jerusalem is destroyed like Egypt. Yet out of Egypt they came out free, were able to walk and go where as they please. I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face. And we're jumping ahead in future now. He's going to bring them out of the land of Israel again to deal with them. 
after he has Satan get after him. Like as I plead with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. History is going to repeat itself again. I will cause you to pass under the rod. Um, what's that song? Well, my brain's not thinking tonight. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Hosea 2.14, Jeremiah 54-6, and 17-20. I will purge you out from among you the rebels. And them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. And they shall not enter the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. I'm going to get rid of the wicked ones. I'm going to clean Israel. As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, Go ye, serve ye every one his idol, idols. And hereafter also, God said, Go and serve to your idols. Go ahead. If ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. Go ahead. Go serve your idols. Do it. I have nothing more to do with you anymore. You talk about a separation. God gives him permission. Go ahead. You're not going to love me? Go. But I, I'm done with you. You're done. For in my holy mountain, Jerusalem, in the mountain of the height of Israel, Jerusalem, saith the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me, not the idols, there will I accept them. There will I require your offering, your first fruits of the oblation, and your holy thing, no children being killed. These are the ones that God is going to weed out. These are the ones that are, love God and don't want to do anything against God. They'll come into the land. All those that rebel, all those idolaters, all those whore, whoremongers and all that, they'll be cast out. I will accept you with your sweet Savior. When I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered, and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. The heathen are going to speak well of me by you. Somewhere I forget in the Bible, he's yelling at the Jews. He says, you know what? You have caused my name to stink. I think it's Acts. No, maybe not. Ye shall know that I am the Lord. When I shall bring you into the land of Egypt. Now we're seeing the future judgment. He ain't done with the Jews. He's just going to clean them out. He's going to weed them out. He's going to separate the, 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 the chaff from the wheat. And the wheat will be called into the barn for celebration. Into the country for the which I have lifted up my hand to give it to your father. Lifted up his hands against the Egyptians, against the world. And there shall ye remember your ways, and all your doings, wherein ye have been defiled. And ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all the evil, for all your evils that you have committed. They're going to be sorry for what they've done. Ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have wrought with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings, O ye house of Israel, saith the Lord. Not because of who you are, Israel, it's because of who I am, God. You know, we're going to heaven not because of what we are, but because of what Jesus is. Plain and simple. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, again, inspiration. Inspiration. Son of man, set thy face toward the south, and drop thy word toward the south. And prophesy against the forest of the south field. Uh-oh. What's wrong with this forest? They've been going there having little church meetings with the idols. They say to the forest, hug the trees, save the owls. Say unto the forest of the south, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will kindle a fire in thee. And it shall devour every green tree in thee, and every dry tree, 
The flaming flame shall not be quenched, and all the faces from the south to the north shall be burned therein. It's speaking about a fire has been burned one third of the trees in tribulation. One of the prophets writes about the trees saying a child shall number them. Well, a child can't number that high. Not to be many trees left. And all flesh shall see that I, the Lord, have kindled it. So that hasn't happened yet. It shall not be quenched. Then said I, O oh Lord God, they say of me, does he not speak parables? <laughs> you know what they just thought of the ch entire chapter 20? It's a parable. You know what they did for Ezekiel, the elders that came to him? They didn't listen to one word that God said. You're speaking in parables. Isn't that a shame? God is reaching out to them through Ezekiel saying, listen, this is why you need to print, repent. This is your trouble. This is your problem. Oh, that's not the message we want. They utterly rejected what God had to say. That's that's a shame. Because you know what we know from Jeremiah? They're killed. They're wiped out in Jerusalem. And more are brought to Babylon. They didn't repent and they didn't get right. 